In this assignment, we will be going through making some standard pitch zoom style touch controls. Our controls will be made by using a script that will attach to the camera. Select the main camera in the scene. Next, we will add a C sharp script to our camera by clicking Add Component, New Script. We will call our script Pinch Zoom. Once that is done, click Create and Add. Now, we can double click on the script to open it for editing. Let's remove the body of the class so we have a nice clean place to start. The principle of a pitch zoom works as follows. We need to first make sure we have exactly two touches on the device. Then we need to know the distance between those touches on both the current frame and the previous frame. If the distance between the touches has gotten smaller, the touches have moved closer together and we should zoom out. Similarly, if the distance between the touches has increased, then we should zoom in. The first thing we need to do in this script is to make a couple of public float variables. These will be used to adjust the speed at which the zoom happens. We need two variables so that we can separately adjust speeds to both perspective and orthographic cameras. We will call these variables perspective zoom speed and ortho zoom speed, respectively. We will also give them a default value of 0.5. Since touch input is detected in time with the update loop, it is usually best to deal with that input in the update function. However, we only want to do anything if there are exactly two touches on the device. We can check this using the input.touchCount property. Now that we are sure that there are exactly two touches, we can store those touches in our own touch variables. This way, we don't have to keep accessing the properties of the input class. We access the touches using the getTouch function of the input class. Since there are only two touches present, these will be indices 0 and 1 in the touches array. We can therefore pass 0 and 1 to the getTouch function to get a copy of these touches. Now that we have the touches, we need to find out what their positions were in the previous frame. We do this by taking their current position and subtracting their delta position. We want to find the distance between the touches in each frame and use that knowledge to determine whether we need to zoom in or out. To find the distance between the touches in either frame, we subtract one touch's position from the other to get a vector between them. Then, from that vector, we simply find its magnitude. We can do this in one step by enclosing our vector subtraction in parentheses and using the dot operator. We are using the term delta because it refers to a change between two pieces of data. Having calculated the distance between touches in each frame, we can now find out the differences between those distances. This time, the order in which we subtract is important. We will subtract the current frame's distance between touches from the previous frame's distance. This will result in a negative value if the distance in the current frame is greater than that of the previous frame. This means that the fingers are moving apart. If the fingers are moving apart, then we expect to zoom in, reducing the field of view or orthographic size of the camera. Since we want to reduce either the field of view or orthographic size under these conditions, this is the correct way to subtract the two values. Before we can go about changing the properties of the camera, though, we need to know if the camera is in orthographic mode or perspective. If it is orthographic, then we can adjust the camera's orthographic size by the change in the distance multiplied by the orthographic zoom speed. We are also going to make sure our camera's orthographic size does not drop below zero. If it does, the image will invert. To prevent this, we are going to use the max function of the MathF class. This will return whichever is the largest of the parameters it is given. We will give it the camera's orthographic size and a value of 0.1. That way, if the size drops below 0.1, we can instead set it to 0.1. Now, if the camera isn't in orthographic mode, 
then we know it's in perspective mode, and we should instead change the field of view. We can adjust the field of view by the same amount, but using the perspective zoom speed instead. We again want to limit the field of view. However, since the field of view represents an angle, we need to clamp it between 0 and 180. We do this using the clamp function of the MathF class. This takes three values. First, the value you wish to clamp, then the minimum value is allowed to be, and then the maximum value it's allowed to be. Our value is the camera's field of view, and we want it to be between 0.1 and 179.9. When making your own pinch zoom system, you may want to pick more appropriate limits for your field of view and orthographic size. We are using the limits shown in the script because they are the extremes of what produces a reasonable result. That is the end of our script, so now it is time to test it. We are assuming at this point that you have a device ready and set up to test. For instructions on how to do this, consult the device's documentation. We are now going to build this project by going to File, Build Settings. We need to add the current scene to the build. You may be prompted to save the scene if you haven't already. We will then click Build and Run. As you can see, when we move our fingers together, the camera zooms out, and when we move them apart, we zoom in.